I put together Willie. I uh, just got back from uh, Mexico. Willie Rodriguez, you know our folks down the road that we support in a Hispanic ministry, and he brought a bunch, a, a bunch of video. And so th- the sound quality is not great. The last part of it is in English, uh, you know, translated. Although you know you might or might not be able to really understand all of it, but this is our ministry. We've invested in this. We invest when Willie goes to Mexico. So I wanted, I wanted us to see this a little longer than the three minutes we usually do. So again, I apologize, but, but see what's going on. Good ministry, and you, this is part of your ministry. We have helped to put the, the ceiling or the, the roof, thank you, the roof on the on the cinder block building and, and did some stuff like that. This is that location, although he's also at another location. So I'm going to shut up and let's see the video, I hope. And while she's doing that, these are pictures from 34 youth. That's the most in years. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Chad. Thank you for the vision he's got. Uh, And there's the other video.
Sí. Sí. Sí, ya, son los primeros. Échale, Jimmy. Sí, ¿verdad? Ok, brother, brother Danny. This is uh, Pastor Jose and uh, his wife. So I want to thank you for everything you do to him. Hermano Jose, ¿qué le quiere decir al hermano? Se llama Denny, Denny Parker. Señor Parker, Dios le bendiga. Estamos aquí. Brother Guanajuato. Denny Parker, God bless you. Estamos aquí en Guanajuato. En un, una reunión muy bonita que tuvimos hoy en la mañana. I'm right here in Guanajuato and uh, I got a, a good re reunion. Donde el siervo Memo trajo la reflexión a la iglesia. He is the pastor Willy Rodriguez bring the bring the sermon to the church. The pueblo se gozó, se regocijó en gran manera. The church is regocijáis en 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 Jesus. Y es una bendición tenerlo aquí y de veras le mandamos muchos abrazos, un saludo a toda su familia, la familia de Cristo. Esperamos que reciban el saludo. Ok, this is a uh, good blessing and he needed the, the church keep in prayer for and uh, it's a uh, uh, waiting to come back uh, pray for the church. Hermana. God bless you, brother. La iglesia, este, no tenemos el gusto de conocerlos, pero por medio de esta entrevista. La roca eterna, uh, roca eterna, just I got the pleasure to recognize este, everyone over there. Les mandamos muchos saludos y, y estamos contentos de aquí con el pueblo de Dios, con el pastor Guillermo. Receive, uh, God bless you, and every time is uh, happy because the brother Guillermo is right here with us. God bless you, all the church, and thank you for everything you do. God bless you, in Jesus' name. May pro probably someday, uh, uh, talk to you in a person so but for Ramea God bless you and thank you for everything you do thank you Dios les bendiga God bless you ok ya ve hermano que hey brother Danny this uh, four guys right here is the one that said Jesus Christ today uh, and last Sunday too So I need to pray for him, for, for all four, and uh, got one more grow. Uh, probably he will come in a little bit, but uh, praise the Lord, uh, this, this four guys, and, uh, and the other four, we accept Jesus Christ today in this uh, the church of Rocket Terra, the uh, Howling in Guanajuato. So this is the lesson that you help come and preach right here in this little town and uh, one bottle. So I need you still keep me praying for, for these guys. Uh, I really need some prayer. Chabela. ¿Cómo se de este lado para que no cale el sol? Yeah, brother Danny, lo que hay que hacer es sacar acá one more, one more boys coming. Y a ser Jesus Christ last week, last Sunday, last Sunday service. He's coming right here, so I need you to keep in prayer for. Uh, this is the this is the job I do right here in this little town. So I need you help for reach more uh, John people coming to the church. So So the church, the cross back to church and got this prayer for this, this little town. They have a 500 people population. 
Chad's moving up there. Uh, let me just say, the guy in the wheelchair uh, had recently got out of prison. Uh, he had broken in somebody's house, and the people in the house chopped his legs off, which is why he's in a wheelchair, and he got saved that night. Amen. Wow. You can see it in his eyes. What redemption that God had brought about for him through the cross of Jesus. Amen. Well, let's all stand together. And uh, it's also pretty awesome to think that each one of you had a part in those salvations. Do you know it? Because you gave and because we gave to Brother Willie to go down there, you had a part in that. Isn't that amazing that you can minister right here, down there? Praise God. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. And I for you we just read that in Sunday school class this morning first John 4 things like 16 Isn't that amazing that God wants us to rest upon that love that he has for us he wants us to know how much he loves us and he proved it when he sent Jesus down a cross while we were yet sinners Christ died for us Isn't that amazing we have assurance in him because he didn't trust upon our ability to get to him he trusted upon his perfect righteous work in jesus to bring us to him that's amazing to me blessed assurance jesus is mine oh what a foretaste of glory divine heir of salvation purchase of god Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story, this is my song. 
praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, I'm happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. Too marvelous for words, too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom? The depth of your love, you are beautiful beyond description, majesty enthroned above, and I stand, I stand in awe of you, I stand, I stand in awe of you. God to whom all praise is due, I stand in all of you. You are my full beyond description, yet God crushed you for my sin. In agony and deep affliction, cut off that I might enter in. Who can grasp such tender compassion? Who can fathom this mercy so free? You are beautiful beyond description. Lamb of God who died for me And I stand, I stand in all of you I stand, I stand in all of you Holy God to whom all praise is due I stand in all of you I stand, I stand in all of you. I stand, I stand in all of you. Oh, 
holy God to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. One more time on the chorus. And I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do just... Thank you for being such an awesome God, Father, and for loving each one of us, even though we don't deserve it, Lord. And I just ask you this morning to be with each one of us, Father. Be with us in our giving. Let us know that what we give will only go to bless your kingdom, Father, and I ask your blessings upon it. I ask your blessings upon Brother Danny this morning as he brings your word. If there's one here that doesn't know you, I pray that it'll touch their hearts and they will come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And thank you for... Chad and the praise band, the beautiful music they've given us this morning. We just ask these things in Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. It's good to have just a variety of, just all kinds of variety of music this morning. I always appreciate that. I think it's such a good thing. Um, don't think I needed to say anything else about any of the stuff, but I'm just, I'm excited about what God's doing, you know. it. I'm excited, and, and I just get a sense of excitement uh, around us. So the next big thing is the end of the month is fall fun day be part of planning that if you like but for sure plan to be here we, we want this to be an opportunity for us as a church to minister to minister to parents and connect with parents especially and also just inviting people to come out now this is view every activity that we do in the church as a ministry opportunity as an opportunity to invite somebody to connect with somebody and boy, what better thing can you do than to have a, a wiener roast? You know, that, I think that'll be a cool thing. You don't typically do that, even with fall festivals. Come out and roast a hot dog, roast a marshmallow, bring your kids, you know, invite, you know, families bringing their kids. So we want to make that a, a really uh, a big thing. And, and, and I'm excited because I sense, even from uh, the, the workers on Wednesday night, an excitement to do ministry. Boy, that's what we want. This is what we're about. This is what God has called us to do. So anyway, so I, I don't need to talk a lot more. We, I guess I need to get to preaching so we can get done here. Even though the Cowboys don't play at noon today, so there's less pressure. All right? Okay, you know. You know, I find it amazing. I find it amazing. Uh, when you look around, you see people with the same background... The same experiences and the same families, and they have radically different outcomes. Sometimes within the same family, 
Now, this is hope for some. You know, I, you know, I, I was raised in a, in a good moral home, and I'm just proud of the home I was raised in, but it was not Christian. So it had, it did not infuse in me the things that I really needed in order to face life and face death. And so the good news is, in spite of that, things turned out different. Things turned out good for me as Christ worked in my life. So even if you come from a bad place, praise God, we're not limited by that. God is not limited by that. Things can turn out good. The reverse is also true. You can be raised in a Christian home, you know, come up and wet your whistle, you know, at five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten, and, you know, learn all there is to know about everything biblical, have good parents that are doing the right things, and everything can go off the rail. Because, you know, living alongside someone that's godly does not mean that we, you, I, will be godly. In fact, the same situations, the same environments, the same workings of God might result in radically different results in different people's lives. And it does. Because as we encounter each situation, we're faced with whether we will respond to God or succumb to the temptation to go a different route. The issue is one of response. The issue is choices. Now it's true that God's path often looks tough and the other path looks really gratifying at first. And how we respond whether we respond in faith or in a self-view is critical and will determine what's going to happen. Because here's the reality. We can, we can choose the path. We can't choose where that path ends up. There was a man uh, named Abraham. We've been talking about Abraham. A friend of God. And he lived like that most of the time. And along with him were a group of other people. One was his nephew that likely he kind of adopted as his own when his brother died. It would seem like that's the scenario. So here was a, a you know, two men going through the same set of things, hearing the same sets of promises, and their outcomes are going to be different. So that's what I want us to look at this morning. The same beginnings, different outcomes, a question of choices from Genesis chapter 13. Let's pray. Father, we invite you now to speak to hearts, Lord, that you would search our hearts Boy, how often, even, even Abraham, and, and as we were looked last week, Abraham didn't always make the right choices. And yet, Lord, you, your grace gave him opportunity to respond, and he chose you. Help us this morning to choose you. Help us, Lord, uh, as many of us here, at least in recent days, are similar circumstances, similar uh, conditions in life, Lord, help us to choose you. Help us to choose the path of faith. Help us to choose faith in you. If someone here this morning has chosen other paths. Pray you'd remind them this morning to return. And maybe some people have never been on that your path. That Lord, this morning they might realize that you love them so much that you, that, that, that you sent Jesus to die for them, for their sins, so they can be forgiven 
the Spirit of God might enter into them and be transformed them into someone else, to give them hope, to give them uh, a relationship with you that will last forever. So, Lord, help us, help, help those that, this morning to trust Christ as Savior. So, Father, we invite you now to be in everything that goes on this morning. Use it for your glory and bringing people to you. Minister to people, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Same beginnings, different outcomes. And it comes down to a question of choices. Now, here we have an Abraham, Abraham's life, Abram's life. Uh, you'll excuse me if I call him by his later name. But, that, you know. Uh, so Abram went up from Egypt, it says, he and his wife and all that he had and lot with him to the south. Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver and gold. And he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent uh, had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai. To the place of the altar which he had made there at first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Lot also, who went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents, i.e. he had experienced the blessing of God. New beginnings, yeah, here's, here's hope, here's hope for us. Sometimes we are on the right path and deviate. That's what Abram did. You know, he was in the land, the promise, and while it's not all... Detail, the reality is he moves down to someplace safe in Egypt and gets all messed up. And then in the process, messes things up worse. And God is the, the gracious God that intervenes and Abram turns back to God. He turned back to God. Isn't that our life? Sometimes on a daily basis. Some, sometimes. Generally on a daily basis. We quick to wander. Quick to move away. And God calls us back. And calls us back to Him. And calls us back to the promise, to the place of blessing. And asks uh, to choose Him. And I am so glad that He does. Sometimes in small things, sometimes in major things. And God is the God of grace. And so He calls Him back. And Abram moves back. And in spite of the mess that he had created, he comes back with blessings from God to a new beginning. Moves back to the land. Moves back richer than he ever was. And even those that were with him, Lot, experience the same thing. And they are blessed and they move back to the land, a place of new beginnings. And so, already there are choices. Abram moves back. He returns to the place of God, Bethel, house of God, and returns to the Lord. This is a good place to be. Abram and Lot, moving back. But even in the midst of that, and even in life in general, it is faced constantly with tensions. Boy, don't you wish that it was just a case of, boy, you get saved and now it's just a piece of cake and we're going to walk along, you know? And it's just not a problem. But that's not the way life is. Life is, is broken. The world is broken. And besides which, we couldn't handle prosperity. We never can. So here in the midst of the blessing in return, now there's tension. So that... Uh, 
it said in the previous verse, Lot also has has livestock, has cattle, has sheep, has goats, has all kinds of stuff. And so Abram and Lot are full of stuff, and now they're going to face choosing in the face of this tension. The land could not support both of them dwelling together, for their possessions were great, that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. At that time, the Canaanites and Perizzites were dwelling in the land. Tensions come, and, and, and again, I think this is a common thing. God blesses us, and that creates tension. Because God doesn't create tension. But it's dealing with the blessings that God gives us, that creates tension. How am I going to take care of this stuff? What am I going to do? And so Abram and Lot are, are dwelling together in the land where God wants them. And strife arises because of, you could argue, the blessings of God. A downfall is when you prosper, tensions can happen. You know, most, most church splits the seeds of those occur in prosperity and personalities and issues. Now, they may break forth in the midst of a problem and tension, but the seeds were sown ahead of time because we have a tendency not to deal with, it becomes ours, it becomes us. In Sunday school this morning, the, the discussion was, one of the discussions was, uh, you know, what's the problem that we have? And it's we're so focused. It's about me and my stuff, and I don't care about you. So, tension erupted. And there's going to be choices that are going to need to be made. And actually, you can boil choices down. And I know things get to be muddied and get to be gray and complex. And at the end of the day, you can boil choices down to two. One of them, are you going to choose a path of faith? Now, this is, this is really cool. This says something about Abram. Abram said to Lot, Let there be no strife between you and me and between your herdsmen and my herdsmen, for we are kinsmen. Boy, I wish people you know, in the church would bear that in mind. Uh, is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself from me. If you take the left hand, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right... I'll go to the left. Abram's the patriarch here. He's the one that the promises came to. And do you, do you sense it? just an overflow of grace? And he says, first of all, he recognizes the problem. And then he says, you know, let's, this is not a good thing. Here's what we can do. You go left, I'll go south, I'll go right. Or we can go, if you would rather have the right, you can have the right, and I'll take the left. You know, I cut the cake, you choose. What a gracious man. A man that, again, already here we see a graciousness about him. Choosing based upon God's graciousness to him. But we don't have to take that path. I, 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 and I don't know, I, this is, you know, somebody the other day said something about Dannyisms, and, and I'm afraid that that probably is, is true, is, you know, you study, you do, and you, you hear, and you listen, and you analyze, and you do, and, and you come up and go, I don't like any of those options. And so you come up with your own, which probably means you're wrong. So I accept that. But it's interesting to me because typically in this scenario, you would expect uh, Abram to be facing east. And so he says, you take the north and I'll take this southern area. 
or you take the northern area and I'll take the southern area and notice what happens because Lot now is going to be influenced by his sight and by his self. And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw the Jordan Valley. Now, actually this area would have ultimately been in the land of promise, but it, it seems to me as I read this text that Abram's saying, you take the hill country up uh, Samaria in that area, or you, and you take Jerusalem and down around the hill country in this area, or vice versa. But this is not the choice that Lot is looking up. He lifted up his eyes and saw the Jordan Valley, and we'll explore that. Doesn't say he asked about the promise. Doesn't say he interacted with God. He just looked and lifted up his eyes. And can I say, when we focus on the scene, we oftentimes are going to get in trouble. I believe Abram was offering it within the, you know, the, 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 the ground around him. But Lot's looking over yonder. So let's explore that. Because Lot is going to choose a self-focused path. Notice how he considers a self-focused path. Uh, we're going to see a progression. And Lot lifted up his eyes and he saw the Jordan Valley. He started by looking and then he began to examine it more closely. And Lot lifted up his eyes, saw the Jordan Valley, and it was well watered everywhere. Like the Garden of God. Like the land of Egypt. In the direction of Zoar. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It's pretty interesting if you've ever of course, that, that's true anywhere where there's desert. If you get up high where you can see from a distance, you see desert and desolation, except where there's a river. You know, I always used to say, and, and it's, it's true around here too, just not as obvious, but in, you know, in western Kansas, especially late summer, everything's dead, everything's brown, kind of like here, you know, usually. But you can tell where the creeks are. That's where the trees are. And that's where life is. It's green. It looks good. And so here is, is, as Lot is looking, he sees the Jordan Valley. And along that Jordan Valley, lushness. Greenery. It's like the Garden of Eden. Who wouldn't want to choose the Garden of Eden? Man, this is amazing! But even in the view, it, you know, if you was watching a movie, you'd start hearing the somber music playing in the background going, something is wrong with this picture. You know, the mm -hmm kind of thing, you know? Like, somebody's going to come and jump out with a knife and stab somebody, you know, or, or something bad is about to happen. You see, it's, it's like the Garden of God, and I'm spiritual. Or like the land of Egypt, which is never a good picture. Okay, it was in the direction of Zoar. And that area is going to be destroyed. Already, as he looks, it's wonderful, you think? You know, we, we don't have too much problem here in the church. Y'all are kind of getting past the age of, of, of running away with somebody else's spouse or whatever, most of you. 
Uh, but isn't that what happens? The secretary at work that is just really attractive, really nice, and listens to everything I have to say. Now, we don't worry about that at our church. Our secretary kind of, you know, she kind of speaks her mind. But <laughs> and she's great. Uh, but, you know, my secretary just thinks I'm the wonder, most wonderful person in the world. They don't chew me out. They don't set me down. They don't straighten me out like my wife does. You know, uh, again, that's not here in this church. I've been rebuked and chastised a few times, and rightfully so. Uh, but, you know, you have this perfect woman. She's like the garden of God. Or the land of Egypt that's going to end up in destruction. He examined it closely. And he's being appealed. He's a, you know, it's just hidden fruit is good, right? And, and, and we're, we're talking safe this morning because most of y'all aren't about to run off with, with somebody else. But it doesn't have to be that. That's just a safer thing to talk about here in this audience. There's always something. There's something appealing. Something that would drag you away. And it seems right. Boy, you know, if, if you know, you, you, well, we ought to put a, a closed circuit camera in every pastor's office. So that when somebody comes and says, I know, but you can record all the thousands of times people have said the same thing and it's turned out to be a disaster. This looks like the Garden of God. But it's not. It's going to lead to destruction. He examined it closely and all he could see was the good parts of it. And he chose to go down this path. Let Lot choose. Then Lot chose for himself the plain of Jordan. He chose. And, and, and you know, at the end of the day, it's not because you were influenced. Nobody made you run off the rail. Nobody forced you. It wasn't because I didn't have any choice. At the end of the day, it always comes down to choice. And we have a God that enables us when we have no ability to choose right. We have a God that's able to cause us to choose right. Because if you're a Christian, the Spirit of God lives within us. And He's the voice saying, don't do that. And if we turn to Him, He empowers us to make the right choice. But He'll allow us to choose wrong. Lot chose for Himself the plain of the Jordan. This is not the area He should be choosing. He made the choice, then He journeyed forward. And Lot journeyed east. And they separated from each other. Well, here's, here's, here's a scenario. And, and again, I use the, 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 the safe example. But you know, it doesn't matter the age. It's easy to begin to choose wrong and to move away. And move away from the guidance that, that godly people will help you with. Lot, instead of connecting with Abram still, he separated from each other and, and, and it, it would seem like this is not what Abram intended for him to disconnect. Abram was the only church that Lot had, by the way. And in our age, the church is a tool, is a means by which God is at work in our lives to help us to say, no, don't do that. Don't go that path. Don't choose that way. Don't move away. But he separated themselves, and Lot journeyed east. If in fact Abram was saying this way or that way, and he was facing east, he's going the wrong direction. And it's a journey. Life is a journey. The Christian life is a journey. And it's all the thousands of small decisions we make. All of the little choices. And sometimes big choices that takes us down a path that leads where we do not want to go. Journey forward. 
and he made it his life. Lot settled among the cities of the valley. Progression? Boy, that looks that, that looks like a good that looks like a good thing. You know, I'm gonna think about that. That really would be a good thing. Uh, I, I think I'll choose that direction. And I think I'll keep going until you're settled. And this is your life. And this is not a good place to be. But he made it. He settled there. And you know, there, that, there, that's the truth. Is as you move away. At first it's not, I'm not going to move into Sodom. I'm just going to head that way. And I'm going to keep moving. And I'm going to keep moving. And it becomes easier and easier. And you know, I've given up on God. I've given up on His church. I've given up on anything. I'm just, it's all about me. And that's a bad place to be. Lot settled among the cities. And he got comfortable in the distance from the Lord. He moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. And I'm okay with living here. Not like he was being a missionary. And here's a path. It's not a good path. He got comfortable with the fact he was not with God's people. He was not with God. And it was okay. But by the way, an indication that however we view the Old Testament and saved and not saved and all that stuff. So very interesting because Peter says this. Lot greatly, was greatly distressed by the sensual conduct of the wicked. For as that righteous man lived among them day after day, he was tormenting his righteous soul over their lawless deeds and he, that he saw and heard. So, in a New Testament context, I would say, and he couldn't really fit in because he wasn't part of who they were. But boy, was he distressed. And that's the way a Christian is. He can choose and be attracted to, and be pulled toward, and never be at home there, ultimately, truly, because God hadn't given up on him yet. But here Lot lived out his days and gets in a mess, because he got comfortable in the distance from the Lord. And let's flip real quickly. And consider the faith path. The Lord said to Abram. Now Lot made his choice. But the Lord said to Abram. After Lot had separated from him. Lift up your eyes. And look from the place where you are. By faith. Doesn't belong to you. There's people there. It already said that the Perizzites and the uh, Canaanites were living in the land. But look what I have for you. Consider. The faith path. Consider the promises. You don't have them yet. You may not get them tomorrow, but these are yours. Trust it by faith. And he examined it closely. He's, God says, look northward, southward, eastward, by the way, and westward. For all the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring as the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your offspring can also be counted. You're going to be blessed, man. Consider the blessings that I'm going to give you. Versus the one that Lot saw. By the way, if you notice there, it says eastward also, even the part that Lot chose, ultimately, Abraham will receive. Kind of interesting. His descendants, anyway. He examined it closely, and then he chose the faith path. Abraham settled in the land of Canaan. And the Lord said, Arise, walk through the length, the breadth, the land, and I will give it to you. And he journeyed. 
throughout. By the way, this was an indication. Uh, you, if you bought land, part of your ownership and, and showing your, you received it was to walk through and see the various parts of it. You know, I mean, that was kind of the part of the purchasing thing. Uh, not only would you want to do that, but that's what you did. You, you walked over there and, and you walked over there and, and God said, walk everywhere. This is all yours. And, 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 and this is a journey. This is a faith journey that is beginning as you've chosen it. And he made it his life. He moved his tent and came and settled by the oaks of Mamre, which are at Hebron. And there he built an altar to the Lord. It became his life. It became his life. And he got comfortable in this closeness with the Lord. And there he built an altar to the Lord. He chose. He moved. He considered it by faith. And he got comfortable in this relationship with the Lord. Uh, this morning, somebody made a statement. Oh, man, it's just that really powerful in Sunday school about being retired. And now it's like a, a fresh sense that I can minister to people minister to God. You know, in our previous life, back when you used to work for a living, you know, unless you're a pastor, you don't have to work for a living anyway, but you know, just show up on Sunday and preach too long. Uh, but, you know, you had, you know, 40 to 60, 70 hours is just somebody's paying you and you're providing for your family and they buy your time. And so to some extent, recognize it's not exactly like that, but I mean, that's you, somebody else is telling you what to do to your on your days and on your time and then you retire what do we do with it do we say all right yeah, i had i had some we had some friends uh, in in garland and we actually did bus ministry together and and they, their goal was they were going to just be chintzy, chintzy, chintzy all their life. And someday they were going to retire and then just enjoy themselves and buy a travel trailer and go everywhere and do everything and all that stuff. And there's nothing wrong with doing some of that stuff. And, and actually we lost a little bit of contact and they did that for a while. But you know what they found was, you know, it's not so much fun when it's all about me. And I don't know if they've finally figured it out, but you know, when it's all about God and ministering to people, now there is a great place to be. That's what happens when you make Him part of our life. Doesn't mean we can't do things, go places, or any of that stuff, but it means where's the focus of our life. And Abraham, he got comfortable in his closeness with the Lord, and there's where he's going to dwell. That's not going to be as, it never is as straight. But this is characteristic. This is why God says that Abraham was called a friend of God. Because it was about him. And even when he got into tensions and even when he got into scenarios, he chose, based on his relationship with a living God, rather than what looked appealing on the front. Same beginnings. Lot had seen, you know, you see Lot's name mentioned along with Abraham before now consistently. Different results. What path are you on this morning? Doesn't necessarily matter where you came from. May you come from nowhere. This morning you can choose to get on the path with God. You can trust Christ as your Savior. That's, that's the gracious thing He does. If you're a Christian, you, you, you're probably a lot better Christian than I am, but it's not uncommon on a daily basis 
I'll wander towards myself just like that. And it's a daily renewal to seek Him. So that I make choices that would please Him. That would show I'm enjoying walking with Him. This morning, wherever you're at, whether it's a big thing, a little thing, choose. It's about choices. About the choices we make right now, here today. Choices like church membership. That's a critical choice. And again, we got to talk about that one day, but not just being able to vote a business meeting. It's saying, I'm committed to God's family in this place. If this is where God would have you. Critical that you be here in somewhere and you become a member and you become part of that body. That's, that's, a, that's the path that leads to the right place. Every other path leads somewhere else. So maybe you need to join church. Maybe you need to be baptized by immersion. Never done that before. Well, you know, that's part of the process as well. Maybe you just need to trust Christ. Or maybe it's just some small thing in your life. Whatever it is, choose Him. Choose His path this morning. Father, we love you and we invite you now to speak to hearts. Draw us to yourself. Speak to us individually. Lord, may every one of us walk out to say, you know, preacher, you, you, I think you, you preached to me this week. Uh, and even though I didn't, you know, God may be. So, Lord, help us to hear from you and respond, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me, please. Father, forever faithful in keeping your covenant of love. You have never forsaken your people or betrayed our trust. You are faithful and true. And just to say I love you is not enough. If I say I love you, I will do what you say. I will obey you and surrender all. If I say I'm your friend, I will keep your commands, I will obey you and surrender all. Jesus, there is no other so lovely, you satisfy my soul. Are constantly keeping your promise. I will never be alone. By your goodness and grace, may I live in a way that really shows. If I say I love you, I will do what you say. I will obey you and surrender all. If I say I'm your friend, I will keep your commands. I will obey you and surrender all. So take my life. I will obey you and 
enter in a row. If I say I'm your friend, I will keep your commands. I will obey you and surrender all. Thank you all for being here this morning. And uh, if you'd like to be part of figuring out what we're going to do on fall day, so David doesn't have to do it all by himself. Uh, Tomorrow at noon, so we'll we'll get together, and I, it shouldn't take very long. I think we've got a lot of ideas, and so uh, anyway, where uh, fellowship hall, family life center. I'll never call that family. I always call it fellowship hall. Anyway, all right, okay. Uh, did I hand you the mic? Yeah, Mike, have you got the mic? I got the mic. All right, do it, Mike. Appreciate it. Father, we just come before you, just praising you and thank you for this day. Again, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house, to study your word and hear it brought to us. I thank you for the message we heard today. Father, just touch our hearts. Let us all come to you and worship you. Give us the wisdom to reach to those around about us that are lost and unconcerned, Father. Let us bring them to you before it's too late. I love you, and I pray this in Jesus' name.